Indira Gandhi National Open University presents a program on the foundation course in science and technology. Course code FST1, Block 4, Unit 16. We present a program entitled Population Pressure devised by Dr. Jaswant Soki. Do you know that India is the second most populous country in the world, only next to China? At the time of independence, we were just 340 million people. Whereas in 1988, our population crossed a mark of 800 million. That is, we have added one more India since independence and we are still adding one Australia to our population every year. This rapid increase in population is a cause of great concern in our country because it is an extremely difficult task to provide for the needs of such a large number of people. It is not only food that people need, they also require safe drinking water, a balanced diet, health care services, housing facility, clothing, education and employment. Now the question arises, where to accommodate this ever increasing number of people? The size of available land cannot increase, nor will there be more rain from the sky or more natural resources like coal, petroleum, ores and metals. All these resources remain limited and the pressure on them increases with the increasing number of people. Imagine a house where four people live in a room. Now what would it be like if four more people were made to stay in the same room? Wouldn't the situation become unbearable? Initially, whatever resources were shared between four people are now to be divided amongst eight persons. The same can be said about our world too. But what are the causes that led to such a situation? Where did we go wrong? We talked to Professor P. N. Srivastav, Member, Planning Commission, and Professor J. P. Gupta, Director, National Institute of Health and Family Welfare, to seek their views on this issue. Professor Srivastav says, The increase of population in this country basically the poverty and illiteracy. And unfortunately we have that in, even after 40 years of our independence we have about uh, two-thirds of the population is uh, uh, illiterate. When people are poor they do not have the confidence whether the children being born are going to survive or not then there is a tendency to have more children another one is that in uh, poverty ridden society and families the parents look to the sons also for the age old pension that there are more sons they will be able to take care of their old age they do not have that much of confidence in daughters because the daughters get married they go uh, to uh, other houses and hence they look uh, towards their sons to take care of them. Apart from poverty and illiteracy, our victory over many killer diseases like plague, smallpox, etc. and the advent of miracle drugs like antibiotics have led to a fall in the death rate and an increase in life expectancy. Professor Gupta explains. The main reason for this population growth has been a very steep fall in death rate which has decreased from a figure of 27.4 in 1951 to about 11.7 in 1981 whereas the birth rate on the other hand has not declined so steeply and it has come down only from a figure of 39.9 in 1951 to about 32.7 at present by 1985. The decline in the death rate has been more steep as compared to the decline in the birth rate and this is what has led to an alarming rate 
of increase of the population besides all this some of our social and cultural attitudes have also contributed to this increase in population there are too early marriages that there are too close and too many children produced by each mother and that these pregnancies continue to occur till quite later period of the life that is the reproductive life of the females the reasons for the tremendous increase in population are economic backwardness illiteracy socio cultural attitudes and the increasing difference between death and birth rate we asked professor shrivastav to share his views on the growth of population in a wider context population problem has been faced all over the world when we look into the history you will find that in ad 1 we had the population of 250 million in the world and the first doubling of population took place in uh, 1650 years the next doubling took place in 200 years then in 80 years and the next doubling was in 45 years and now the doubling will take place in 30 to 35 years now that makes a, a a very big problem especially in the developing countries the population problem is not only confined to developing countries like india but it is a worldwide phenomenon professor shrivastav tells us in developed countries the problem is different there uh, the death rate is very much low infant mortality is very much low when the children are born they are going to survive and hence uh, they are looking more for a raise in their standard of living and once you are looking towards the rise in standard of living then positively we like to have uh, lesser children some of the countries like uh, uh, west germany and japan they there the growth rate is is minus and they are getting worried what is going to happen to the nation if the growth rate continues to be minus the population expansion in india is the cause for tremendous concern in spite of the fact that china has more people why professor shrivastav says china has the largest population over 1 billion uh, people whereas india we have just crossed about 800 million people but if you look to the density of population you will find that this is higher in india than uh, in china the density of population in china is about 120 persons per square kilometer in india uh, it is about 256 persons per square kilometer so the density of population per square kilometer is more than double that of china and today india is adding more per year than china and hence our population is becoming more and more acute the large density of population consumes large amounts of natural resources these resources are not replaced as fast as they are consumed the over usage of resources and their not so quick recovery results in several environmental problems professor gupta says such an increase of population is likely to have tremendous impact on the environmental side for instance the land man ratio is bound to decrease that there would be a greater degree of depletion of several kind of resources and professor shrivastav believes increase in population does uh, take us to environmental degradation but environmental degradation is taking place more because of different concerns industrial concern is there and industry of course is also necessary for, for population but much more than that is because of uh, unethical contractors who because of their own greed they uh, they cut off the trees rather than the population population yes needs energy to cook its meal and uh, if you tell people that don't cut the trees because it will have its bad effect after 40 years i don't think they are going to listen to this because they are concerned for cooking their food in the evening i mean if they don't uh, uh, collect wood they will not be able to do that but they collect wood rather than cut trees 
cutting of trees is being done somewhere else by someone else similarly when the population increases then you need power when you need power you will have to go for uh, whether it is hydroelectric whether it is nuclear whether it is uh, thermal it will lead to uh, environmental pollution so i think uh, population is in a reverse sense responsible for this now you know the gravity of the situation the increase in population has been very steep now let us see what actions should be taken to check the population professor gupta there are two kinds of measures which can take care of this one those measures which fall within the health sector and where already whatever is being done by the government it needs to be increased in terms of quantity and quality but more important than that is those measures which fall largely beyond the health sector and what are known generally as beyond family planning measures Now there is a question of raising the female literacy increasing the age at marriage the question of women and employment the question of the status of women in general there is a question of discouraging of child labor and all these are questions which can largely be tackled by substantial and increased inputs into other sectors of economy than the health but one factor which seems to be common in this these sectors as well as the health is the greater degree of inputs in terms of information education and communication policies strategies and networks but can development alone solve the problem professor shrivastav feels it has been said that once the development takes place then the population uh, problem would be tackled but if you look within uh, our own uh, country there are states which are very rich for example haryana per capita uh, income is about um, 3200 punjab per capita income is about 3800 per year but there the birth rate is not as low as in states like uh, uh, kerala tamil nadu where the per capita income is low but the women's literacy is much high so it is directly related or i will say more directly related to the education and economic upliftment of women rather than uh, poverty alone so you can see that literacy plays a very important role in tackling the population problem kerala has an interesting story of success in 1978 The sample registration scheme showed that Kerala had the lowest birth rate of all Indian states. It was 25 per 1000 as against 33 for the rest of India. What is particularly intriguing is that between 1940 and 1950 Kerala's birth rate was higher than the all India average. Many socio-economic factors have been found responsible for the rapid decline in birth rate these are the rising age of marriage of women the increased use of contraceptives a high family literacy rate a rapid decline in infant mortality and an equal distribution of income and social services about 53% of kerala's rural women are literate as against the all india average of 13% In the credit of this achievement Kerala's health and education programs have played an important role Now isn't the lesson obvious As we stand shoulder to shoulder facing our own future it is clear that we must recognize the urgency in seeking viable solutions to our population problem Though the situation is alarming All efforts to resolve the crisis are worthwhile and the means are not impossible with awareness and resolve we can together achieve You've been listening to the program Population Pressure devised by Dr. Jaswant Sokhi who was also the content coordinator. 
the narrator Maya Pinto. It was produced by Om Prakash Tevar and assisted by Vinod Gupta. This program was brought to you by the Communication Division of Indira Gandhi National Open University.